like first to get your thoughts on this program and how, how come it took us so long to get to this point? Okay, it's, it's historical. It's a good program. It's historical. Um, for, for a very long time, Nigeria had, um, didn't have a gas-centric legislation. No legislation was gas-centric. Everyone looked at crude oil. In fact, it was said that if you found um, water, you were better off than finding um, natural gas. So there was flaring. No one wanted. No one needed it in country. The only buyer at, at some point was the PATN, which was previously NEPA, National Electric Power Authority. So there was no use for it until about 1999, when you had the Nigerian liquefied natural gas, and people then wanted to export IOCs. Everyone wanted to export because it was then profitable. So you you you'd want to export. It was profitable, but any any associated gas that wasn't used was then flared. So that was a the problem. There was no gas centric. Um, legislation or rules or regulations to attract utilization of gas. So it took us that long because everyone focused on crude oil. Uh, very okay. But uh, then I'd like you to speak to f first the opportunities for local players in there trying to you know get into this gas gas um, gas the gas business now, and then trying to understand the process for bidding. Okay, um, it's interesting. It's interesting because you typically be looking at partnerships for for local guys. You'll be looking at partnerships because you'd be looking at um, technologies to be able to utilize that flare, to be able to capture and utilize the flare. And in, then means you may need to partner with um, international guys. Now, the the, what, what we have got in Nigeria is a situation where you also have marginal fields players who have also who have got that opportunity. And it will typically be marginal field players. Recall that you've got two broad options. You've, uh, you have guys who can't get permits to go to those flare uh, sites and get, and you've also got the opportunity for EMP companies to have midstream companies or have approved flare out projects. So for marginal field players who are mostly Nigerians and in many cases partnering, that's an opportunity, additional um, source of income and to be able to utilize gas um, in that respect. All right then, but I hear some IOCs are reluctant to give up some of these flare sites. Mm, yeah, I mean, that, that's not unusual and that's not surprising. Also because, like I mentioned, historically no one wanted to use gas, no one cared about gas. You'd rather even find water than find gas. Now it's attractive, whether it's internationally, whether it's even locally, because Nigeria is, I mean, we've got more gas than we've got crude oil. So because it's now quite attractive, more people are interested in utilizing their own gas rather than having third party come up to take that gas at, at the flare, flare point. They would rather use it, um, develop their own projects, fly out, fly out projects. Okay, for, for you, legally though, what do you think are the most contentious issues that are going to come up, you know, when this comes on board? Okay, um, I interestingly, there were a few uh, tricky points in the regulations, the 2018 regulations, the uh, flare gas um, waste, uh, uh, waste prevention um, regulations. regulations. Um, but, but some of those... Um, issues have been dealt with. Four other regulations were issued shortly after that to clear those, those challenges. I don't see much of a legal challenge because I think it's been well thought through um, from, from cradle to grave, it's been well, well thought through. Uh, otherwise, there would have been problems if, if those additional regulations weren't also issued. All right then, but when you look at how we are positioning our, you know, our, our strategy for gas, do you see this coming up as a more responsible and sustainable way to you know address the issues that will come up with climate change oh yes you know nigeria is, is uh, assigned up to the paris agreement where we've agreed to reduce um flaring and um, ensure that by 2020 there's a fl flare out so we, we've got a new date so i think the idea has always been not to just um, have penalties for gas flaring but to make it attractive you would have projects and recall it's royalty free. You've got projects that would utilize that gas. And to the extent that we want to have gas centered industrialization, it then does mean that um, these projects will be sustainable. It then also means that there will be opportunities for other things like creation of jobs. I understand up to 300,000 jobs will be created directly and indirectly, and about 600,000 metric tons of liquefied petroleum gas, which is, which is the cooking gas. So this will be opportunities for businessmen. Beyond there's a, that multiplier effect. So beyond just um, ending uh, gas flaring or having a flare out date, you also have opportunities for other businessmen along the value chain. So I, I think this will be sustainable, provided 
um, everyone continues to cooperate, everyone continues to work within the rules, and oh. we remain creative. Working within the rules is usually not a very easy thing, but I'd like you to speak on the, the kind of um, numbers we're seeing for bids from, for this flare out points. Yeah, yeah, over 700 for just 173, 178 um, flare sites. And that, that's incredible. It shows that there's a lot of interest. One thing you'd realize about Nigeria is that Nigeria is a large market and there are opportunities. In any, in any country, in any community where you've got challenges, where you've got problems, once you, solve those, once you can solve those problems, that's an opportunity for you to generate revenue. Once you add value, you, you get value in, in return. That, that's what it is. The opportunity is enormous and the interest is um, quite serious. But, okay, let's look, because I understand that the federal government is going to hand over these sites, you, you know, to the guys who win, win, eventually win the bid by 2020. But when you look at the makeup, you're seeing over 700, the Minister of State for Financial Resources says about 800, you know, bids have been gotten so far on this, on this flare, flare, flare points. Do you see um, um, it playing in such a way that just a small number of companies will, will, are the ones who will finally make out this and get these bids? Yes, I... I, and, I, I and, and, and sorry, and, and companies the companies have to show that they have capacity, you know, to um, carry out this project at, th at that level before they are selected. Okay, yeah, that, that, that's a key criterion. You need to show capacity. It's not a free for all. You need to show capacity, and that, that's crucial. Showing capacity in this case is very crucial, and I believe there will be a lot of partnerships. And like I had mentioned to you, it would go beyond the local guys. There'd be a lot of um, collaborations, both locally and internationally. All right then, but still on the on the on the amount of bids you're seeing, you, yeah, you, you, local and international partnerships in there. But when you look at, at at how it's going to play out at the end of the day, do you see maybe a tiny group of companies being in taking getting the bulk share of the key assets? That's what I expect will be the case. What's what you expect to be the case? Okay. All right then, then. But let's look at the amount of investment that then will be needed then to drive this through. Okay, um, um, that, that's serious. Um, and that's why I've said it wouldn't be a, a core Nigerian thing. You'd have international players coming, you'd have even international financing, and people will be creative with financing. Because, you, you, I mean, I, I doubt that you'd have projects less than a million to $10 million for, for one project. And you, need, you require several of those to be able to make um, progress. So it would require financing that is not just Nigerian, you'd require international um, financing. All right, but very quickly, though, how, so are there, is there a, a, a system in place for regulation going forward to check that people are not flouting, you know, the, the, the yes. rules? Yes, the regulations are quite um, comprehensive, they're robust. And I, I do believe that because this is, this is probably the largest um, gas monetization project anywhere in the world, so we will learn as we, as we move ahead. And there will be new regulations. Regulations will be modified. New regulations will be introduced to ensure that um, this does make progress. All right.